All right, uh, people probably remember the series of repair videos, attempted repair videos, on a uh, Agilent uh, 3456A and uh, 3458, I'm sorry, 3458A. It's an eight and a half digit voltmeter, but they have a custom chip in them that goes bad, and this one has the custom chip in it that went bad, and it's bad and it's not repairable. It's not worth the money repairing it. But but today, today as a special bonus, we've got another one, second one. All right, so um, I'm excited about this. Uh, this one is a older one. It's a Hewlett Packard uh, 3458A. And I, I know for a fact that this particular instrument was inside Hewlett Packard. It was made by Hewlett Packard, was used inside Hewlett Packard to be calibrating Hewlett Packard uh, products. Um, and so that's its province. Uh, and uh, so we will see, I know that it has an error but I don't know what error, but I have two of them now. So it's always good to have two of them because then you can compare the two and it makes troubleshooting a whole lot easier. All right. And so we will power it up and see what it says. Ram test one low. Okay. And it's just sitting there. So uh, that's probably one of the Dallas Ram chips. So this has battery backed up Ram in it. And if the Ram is dead, it can't run its program. Okay. But let's go ahead and see if we can kind of walk around this and see if we can get it to do something. Uh, let's do a reset. Ram checksum, testing hardware. and we get an error and we get no display at all. Oh, wait a minute, we get a display on this one. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, uh, I think this one's gonna work. I think we'll be able to repair this one. So look at that, what a beauty, what a beauty. Let's, uh, let's zoom you guys in here on all this, on all this goodness here, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can read that, it's a little bit dim. Um, so, uh, we might be able to, I think this one has a much brighter display. This is a newer instrument. We might be able to take parts of this instrument and put them in this instrument and make it much, much nicer. Or maybe this one just works fine and we have to live with a dim display. Or maybe we just move the display. Who knows? Uh, but it looks like it actually functions. It's, it's throwing an error code. So let's look at the errors. Let's see if I remember how to do that now. Oh, error. So we'll do error. We'll get a 114 system error, which is not a good sign. <laughs> it's not a good sign. Um, so, where are the arrow keys now? I try, try to remember how to run this thing. Uh, here, arrow keys. System error, non volatile RAM checksum. So, that's okay. That's an okay error. Now, let's go with the uh, error again. No error. That's the only error code. That's the end of the error codes. Let's do that again. We'll do a test. And This one's taking a long time. As you go down in voltage eight and a half digits, you have to have longer, longer uh, dual slope integration times. Uh, there we go. Now it's testing 100, 100K. This looks like it's going to pass this test. I'm so excited. I am so excited. I think one of the easy things to do would just be to pull the Dallas RAM chips out of this unit and put them into this unit and see if it just, that just fixes the problem right from the get-go. Uh, Self-test did fail. Let's see what the error was. Uh, I'm always, whenever you uh, work on something, you forget. Okay, so we get, a, we get an O2. AC VOS DAC 
Convergence. Oh, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. Um, and we'll do another error. Another no error. I don't like that convergence error, uh, but it is giving us numbers, which this one would never give us a number. All right. So maybe this RAM, it's just a RAM problem. Maybe it's a fuse problem. We don't know. But I say we open this up and take a look inside. Um, and uh, maybe before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, let's go back out to DC volts here. Let's put in some volts, see if it measures something. All right here, front terminals is out. High and the low ohms, input. So I guess this is the input here. Whoops, I've got to bolt it down so it doesn't move on me. Okay, there we go. I've got a little volts source here. Let's go ahead and stick it in. Uh, let's turn it on. Let's turn it on. Maybe it's not charged. Oh, there we go. Should be uh, two and a half volts. Look at that. Look at that. 2.5 volts. It works. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so this box says it's supposed to be 4.99909, 9992. That's very, very close. <laughs> very, very close. Uh, this says 7.496. Yep, 496. This thing's working. This thing's working. Yay. Yay. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, no need to open it up. Uh, I will be taking a look uh, in maybe a future video on uh, fixing that RAM chip, maybe ordering a new RAM chip or just moving, probably order a new RAM chip because the ones in here are going to be super old. This is going to be even older though, right? Uh, we'll look at some date codes and see what what uh, age this is. Uh, but uh, this one seems to be a completely functional unit other than the batteries are going dead. So well, one of the very, very first things before you yell and scream and tell me what I'm supposed to do, um, I'm going to take the ROM that has the Cal data in it and back it up. That's the very, very first thing to do is back up the Cal data ROM and uh, we'll be good after that. So that's my next step off camera. And uh, next time we should be able to try to fix this thing up a little bit.